Now this might come across as a little twilight zony, but today's grim adventure finds us in a place between Hollywood and West Hollywood, a place on Melrose Avenue known as Revolution Records. But back in the 80s, this was known as Vinyl Fetish. When it comes to buying music here in Hollywood, Amoeba Music is probably the first place that comes to mind. But truth be told, there are a ton of record shops that are quite unique, like Revolution Records. But for this story, in order to tell our Misfit story, which also includes Vampira, we got to go back to April of 1982, right here in front of this building. So the question is this, why out of all the record stores that have come and gone or still exist here in Hollywood, why is this one so important? We well, see this window right here, this storefront window. Back in April of 1982, the Misfits and Vampira were photographed right in front of this window. Vampira actually came to see the Misfits play inside the store. I think they played. They definitely did like a meet and greet. With that being said, it's not a very big venue on the inside. It's a small little record store, but the Misfits played here. Sisters of Mercy played here. Susie Sue and the Banshees played here. And we're gonna go inside. We know that the Misfits and Vampire were photographed in front of this window because of a Polaroid that is actually labeled April of 1982. And in the picture, you can see the Misfits standing with Vampira right here. You can see a bunch of Misfits memorabilia and signage in the window. But the rock wall is still the same. Just being able to match up this wall with the photo of them standing in front of it is enough for me, but it doesn't end there. It gets better. If we turn and look at the storefront from this way, you can see the grate security grate that they would put once the store is closed right there on your left hand side. In this photo, it's a little grainy, but you can see them standing with this behind them. If you walk down the street just a little bit, you'll find the next photo location that was taken that day with Vampira and the Misfits. And it was taken from right about here. You can see that building in the center of your screen. If you can read it, it says the Groundling School. But back then, that whole block right there looked a little bit different. That building right there looks relatively the same, kind of, with those windows. But we know it's this way because of the, the sidewalk, the direction of the sidewalk, as well as the, the street lights. Oh man, I love it. Now, I stand corrected. I think I said that a lot of the bands were performing in here, but if I'm not mistaken, they were only here doing in-store signings. So inside this building, inside this room right here, you could come here back in the 80s and meet the Misfits, Sisters of Mercy, Iggy Pop, the Ramones, Susie Sue and the Banshees, Duran Duran was even here, Specimen, and the list goes on and on. Talk about Hollywood history. And on top of it all, it's still a record store. Now talking to the owner, we do believe that the band would have been situated right over here with their backs to the wall facing me right now. And you could walk up to the counter and make your purchase, meet the band, have them sign your stuff. Man, this is what I'm talking about when it comes to walking history. And you just never know what's in your own backyard. One of the things I love the most about this store is the t-shirts that are lining the walls. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what these are? Because each one has to have a story. Yes, these are all true vintage, very authentic. Uh, the Cramps one right there is dead stock 1982, and that came from Ivy's personal collection. That's Ivy, the guitar player for the Cramps. What about this one over here, the yellow that's, one? That's uh, Roxy Music. That's also a dead stock, Screen Stars. 1974. Alice Cooper? The goes Alice, to hell? Yes, the Alice Cooper is a Warner Brothers promo shirt. There was probably only about 200 of those made. 1976. I can see the little logo right down there on the sleeve. Oh yeah. So tell us about some of the other ones you got here. Uh, Motley Crue, 87. 
LA Guns, 88, Black Sabbath, Mob Rules, 81, Rolling Stones, European, 82, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, 76, Tommy Gunn, The Clash, and the uh, Motley Crue shirt, 1982. That's the first Motley Crue tour t-shirt. And I've had, I've had that actually since I was 14 years old. When was the last time you put it on? Uh, probably 1985. 1985, and there it is forever. Yes. Awesome. And everything is for sale. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. If you look over here in the back corner, you got the Clash, Black Market Clash, Elvis Costello, and one of my personal favorite bands, Joy Division. Here are the young men. Now, back in the day, back when this was vinyl fetish, old subway posters would line the walls. So you can come here and buy them. You can still buy some today. They have some in stock if you're gonna get out here. I'm not sure if they're online or not. Are they online? Uh, no, they're not. Just in person only. In store, yes. So that's the joy of it. And this is dead stock from 1984. There's no pinholes, no tape marks. It's dead mint. That's beautiful. Let me zoom in there a little bit. So what do we have? Here. Right here we have a 1982 live recording of the Misfits playing at the 930 Club in Washington, D.C. And it is for sale, of course, as is everything else in the store. So why don't we go ahead and give it a little listen, yeah? So this is the Night of the Living Dead. Well, that's the title of this recording. Yes, it is. And I believe the song is on there as well. All right. There we go. Oh, I love the sound of a record. Same here. When it comes to the Misfits, especially Glenn Danzig, I think it's no secret, there are a bunch of guys that you do not want to mess with. That's why this photo, our next location, kind of cracks me up. Now we can't really get that close to it, but there's a photo of the band posing, if you will, with a statue of Rocky and Bullwinkle. And if I stand right about here, the Rocky and Bullwinkle statue is no longer here. Instead, it's further down on Sunset Boulevard towards where Tower Records used to be. I pointed it out in a video we did on Vampira. But back in the day, it used to stand right in front of this building, facing me. Now, pay close attention to the roof. Pay close attention to this little cutout in that window. Also, pay close attention to this window that's no longer there, as well as this little filigree or design on the wall. You can see that in the photo of the band hanging out with Rocky and Bullwinkle. Typically, I don't like putting cameras over fences, but this is a business that's not open right now. But you can see that fountain right there, that stone fountain, pretty much right where that's standing now is where the Rocky and Bullwinkle statue used to be. So the Misfits, part of their history here in Hollywood has to deal with this statue. And I mean this in the greatest way, but I've always heard that Glenn is a bit of a, bit of a nerd, like a cool nerd. The statue of Rocky and Bullwinkle stood in this location for quite some time. And eventually it was taken down and people thought it was gone forever, when in fact they were just refurbishing it, repainting it. And they put it in a permanent place, well for now, a couple blocks down the street, like I said, towards Tower Records. Now, there's a fun story about this. As it turns out, the reason the Rocky and Bullwinkle statue was here at this location is because this was the office of the man who created Rocky and Bullwinkle, a man by the name of Jay Ward. Now, directly across the street is this building right here, known as Chateau Marmont. 
it's got a history all to itself. At some point we'll cover it. I got some crazy plans. But I can't believe I'm gonna say this. You see that billboard that says Discovery Shark Week hosted by Jason Momoa? Well, back in the day, more importantly, the 50s, there was a, a pinup girl, a statue at the top of the billboard that used to be there, the advertisement. And it would evolve or revolve, go around in a circle. Now, they would often change the way her bathing suit looked. They would, they would paint her bathing suit. And the guys over at Jay Ward's office, they would paint the Rocky and Bullwinkle statue to match it. It kind of became this thing. Things are always changing here in Hollywood. Always changing. You just never really know what to expect or what you're going to see whenever you, uh, you turn the corner or go down a different road or a one-way street. A couple blocks away is this guy. Here it is. Rocky and Bullwinkle, established 1961. Looking good, looking very good. Our last stop on our Misfits tour brings us to the Hollywood sign. Well, as close as you can get without touching it, looking up at it. Yeah, the Misfits did a couple different photos here, their time here in Hollywood. On a hot day like today, it's a little tricky to get to this spot in particular because you can't just drive up and park there. They have everything kind of sectioned off because it is a residence, this road right here. So you kind of have to park pretty far down that way and walk up the hill. 100 degree weather, this is brutal. But we got to do it, our last stop. Even though it is a hot day, it is a nice little hike up to this little lookout spot. But before we go any further, I do want to show you guys something. It's this sign right over here. Get around this little. See it? Caution wildlife habitat. Dangerous animals may be present, including mountain lions and rattlesnakes. So you gotta be careful. Now, if you look to your left, you can see the Hollywood sign. And then you see this dirt mound. In the photos, you can see the band standing up there raising two of the guitars high in the air. Let me see if I can get up this way a little bit. As far as I can tell, it's this dirt mound that they were standing on, probably close to right about there because you can see the Hollywood sign off in the distance in the photo, the Y and the W from right about this angle. Man, that's cool. I got this trail right here. It's not really a trail, it's part of off the trail, if you will, but it's in the right area. So let's get up here. There we go. Oh crap, they could have been standing anywhere up here, but the train is right. Let's walk up a little bit further. Yeah, that's about right. This is probably one of the most popular places to come to get photos of the Hollywood sign. And you get some pretty sweet panoramic views. Look at that. There she is. LA, man, I love it here. Oh, what makes this fun, not only did they get pictures with the Hollywood sign in the background, but they also took pictures with Los Angeles in the background, which is back that way. So if I stand somewhere around here is the exact spot, but this is definitely it. Like I said, the terrain. By no means is this the exact shot of the Misfits, but pretty close to around this area. It looks like you can see that little bump in the mountain right there. And then if you look over to the right, you can see that building. Those appear to be present in this shot. So somewhere close to this edge like this. You hear that thing coming in? Look at that. What on earth? That's massive.
<laughs> that was really cool. That thing keeps circling right now, it's high above me. <laughs> you can hear it, right? Let's see if I can show it. You see it? There it is right there, going towards the sun. <laughs> I feel like I'm in Escape from LA or something like that. Let's get out of the sun here. I feel like I'm getting, where's the Hollywood sign? There we go. I find it odd that I'm the only person up here, that there's no tourists up here. It's mid-July in LA. And then I remember, wait a second, it's 100 degrees and I'm standing on top of a mountain. I got sweat dripping from me, just dripping. My mouth is dry and that is probably why nobody is as crazy as I am. With that being said, let's get in here. Thank you for joining us on another grim adventure, this time tracking down some of the most famous photos from the misfits here in LA, here in Hollywood. It's been fun. I love doing these things. I love walking history. With that being said, from the Hollywood sign, Hollywood, California, happy Halloween. Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always a coming my way.